Salt and pepper are two defaults in a lot of savory recipes, but today we are going to be using them to make your new favorite ice cream. You don't even need an ice cream machine. The only ingredients you'll need are heavy cream, granulated sugar, a little vodka, and of course, lots of salt and pepper. So our first step is infusing our cream. I am just going to add one pint of that and we're gonna put it over medium heat until it's hot and steamy. And then we're gonna add the peppercorns right in there. Now, if you don't have a mortar and pestle at home, no big deal. You can dump the peppercorns on a cutting board, give them a rough chop with a knife, or if you have one of those tiny little coffee grinders, I use that at home too. Just have a designated spice grinder, dump in some peppercorns, get buzz it a couple times, and you're good to go. So I have cut the heat at this point. We are going to let our cream and black pepper hang out for about an hour, just so that the cream picks up all that awesome flavor. Stir it every so often, that just helps it infuse evenly. And in the meantime, I am going to finally crush another half teaspoon of black peppercorns. So our cream has been infusing for about an hour. You can see it has this light brown color. That means all the flavor from the peppercorns has soaked in and we are ready to strain it. So a lot of no churn ice creams, they will use a combination of heavy cream and sweetened condensed milk. We have the heavy cream here, but instead of sweetened condensed milk, we are just gonna be using granulated sugar. It makes a really nice, clean base. It lets the pepper shine, and it's also gonna come in handy in a totally different way later on. So I'm just gonna add the 3 quarters cup right here. So another thing you might see in a lot of no-churn ice creams or just ice creams in general is alcohol of some sort. Alcohol's low freezing point helps the ice cream be really soft and scoopable out of the freezer, makes a nicer texture. So here, just like granulated sugar has a neutral flavor that kind of works in our favor, vodka is the same way. So we are just gonna need a tablespoon and it makes a huge difference. So I think salt is crucial in just about any dessert. In this case, we are going to be bumping up the quantity just a little bit, not so it's overpowering the sweetness, but just so you notice it. So we need a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. This is where that half a teaspoon of peppercorns that we finally crushed earlier is coming in handy now. I really like this because it reinforces that pepper in the infusion and it also creates these really pretty specks in the ice cream. It kind of gives you the illusion of like a vanilla bean, but then you taste it and the flavor is totally different. So I had just stirred this until the sugar dissolved. Now we are going to pop it in the fridge until it is completely cold, at which point we can whip it up. You can just use the same bowl so you don't have to dirty another dish. At least a few hours, but you could do this a day or two in advance if that's better for your schedule. So our ice cream base is all chilled. We are just gonna whip it up to soft peaks. You could use a hand mixer for this. You could use a stand mixer. You could even do a whisk and do it by hand, which I have done a few times, but just keep in mind, it is a workout. It will probably take at least 10 minutes, so choose your own adventure. Let me know in the comments how you would whip up the cream. So we are all ready to pop this in the freezer. While it is setting up, I'm gonna show you how to make an awesome crunchy topping using the same ingredients that are in our ice cream. So this brittle is technically optional, but I figure why not? The ice cream is doing its thing in the freezer and we already have all of the ingredients. We're just using them in a different way. So I have half a cup of sugar that I am adding to a saucepan. And I'm setting this over medium high heat to start to caramelize. 
So if you are new to caramel or you're just like lacking caramel confidence, let's change that. It is not that hard. The thing that I think makes a huge difference is making a wet caramel instead of a dry caramel. So dry, we would just let the sugar do its thing, but it's really prone to crystallization. I've made caramel so much and I still mess up a dry caramel. With a wet, we just add like a splash of water, just a few tablespoons. Think of this like insurance. It is going to evaporate off, but it's gonna help the sugar get hot in a much uh, easier, low key way. Now in the recipe, I don't have a timestamp on this because I don't want you to walk away from the stove. In the beginning, nothing's gonna be happening for a few minutes, but at a certain point, it's gonna change really fast. So just kind of hang out nearby, keep an eye on it and don't futz with it too much. While our sugar is caramelizing, this is a perfect time to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get even more few ingredient desserts. So the sugar is gonna start out bubbling really fast, really actively. After that, it's gonna get kind of slow and thicker. The texture becomes more like honey than boiling water. That's when you know that we're really getting somewhere. It's your cue to stay by it and look for the color to start to change. Color is super deep. You can go to like dark maple syrup, whatever range you're looking for, the darker it is, the more intense the flavor, the more bitter notes you get from that caramel. And I actually really like the bitterness as a contrast to the ice cream. So you're gonna spread it as thin as you can get. While it's still setting, which happens really quickly, we are gonna add some flaky salt. So I like this ice cream best when it is freshly frozen. If you are eating it a day or two after, just leave it out of the freezer for a few minutes until it is nice and scoopable. And just before you dig in, crumble some brittle on top. I love this ice cream so much. It's a little spicy, a little salty, totally unexpected, and I think even better than vanilla. I can't wait for you to try it. Let me know in the comments what you think, and I will see you soon for another big little recipe.